Hello friends, this video on hydrogen part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's understand some physical properties of hydrogen. The first one says it is colorless, orderless, testless. Please note I am finding the physical properties of dihydrogen. That's why I have kept this dihydrogen molecule here. It is colorless, orderless, testless. This is the picture of hydrogen gas in the space. You see there is no color, there is no taste, there is no smell. It is lighter than air, that's why if you see the hydrogen gas balloons go up and that's why we use hydrogen gas to cool the balloon. It is very low density, obviously it is very light, it's lighter than air, it's very low density. It is almost insoluble in water. If you have this hydrogen gas here, you see the carbon dioxide gas dissolves in water, but if you see the bubbles, if you put more and more hydrogen gas, you will see it won't dissolve, it will be the bubbles, it won't dissolve. It is insoluble in water. It can be liquefied at high pressure and low uh, high pressure and low temperature. If you see, there's the liquid hydrogen here, right? Liquid hydrogen gas. It, it can be liquefied and it's highly combustible. It burns. Highly combustible. These are the physical properties of dihydrogen. Let's talk about the chemical properties of dihydrogen. It is not very reactive at room temperature because of H bond not very reactive at room temperature so it is pretty stable at room temperature you can see at 2000 kelvin only 0.081 percent of h2 will get into h and h very very less very less only 0.081 percent at 2000 kelvin but if you increase the temperature to 5000 kelvin you see then almost 95.5 96 percent of uh, the hydrogen gas will convert into uh, hydrogen it is very uh, neutral to litmus so it is neutral. It reacts with metal to form hydrides. We'll discuss about this. It also reacts with non-metal. Reacts with metal, for example, you see sodium hydride, lithium hydride. So this we will discuss about this. It also reacts with non-metal. It, it reacts with, with dioxygen, dinitrogen, sulfur, carbon, halogens. Uh, example, I can give some example if you want. HCl, this is CH4, this is H2S, this is nitrogen, dioxygen, h 2 We will discuss these things anyway uh, in a few slides later. It introduces oxides of metal, we will discuss this. It introduces metal ions also, we will discuss this also. And it reacts with many organic compounds in presence of catalysts to form a lot of uh, um, products. For example, uh, the, the Vanaspati ghee which you get is nothing but the process of hydrogenation in the nickel catalyst. Let's see the reaction of uh, dihydrogen with metals. So we know that uh, my metals plus hydrogen it gives you hydrides. So let's see this. So we have sodium plus hydrogen gas give you two hydrides. Obviously you have to pass the heat. Similarly, calcium plus hydrogen on pass of heat will give you CH2. This is the reaction of uh, dihydrogen with metals. Now let's, let's see the reaction of uh, dihydrogen with non-metals. Right? So we have uh, non-metals and dihydrogen and we have plenty of non-metals and uh, it behaves differently with uh, different non-metals. So we have oxygen, we have nitrogen, we will see the reaction with sulfur, we will also see the reaction with carbon and halogens. All these are non-metals and with non-metals it behaves differently. So let's try first with oxygen. The oxygen, I have hydrogen plus oxygen will give me water. It is easy, right? Did we heat this 970 Kelvin? Let's balance this. This part is done. With nitrogen, so I have, I'll get ammonia. So we have hydrogen, we have nitrogen, we'll heat 750 Kelvin in presence of catalyst RN, we get NS3. Let's balance this. This is my balance sheet. It's three. This is done. Let's see with sulfur. With sulfur, I'll get S2S. 
I have hydrogen plus sulfur. I need to heat this. I'll get S two S. Okay, this guy is solid. Yes. Let's see with carbon. Carbon, I'll get uh, methane. So I have hydrogen plus carbon. You heat this one to seven five Kelvin. You get CH four. Let's pass this. This is also done. And let's see for halogen now. So halogen, if I react hydrogen, let me write hydrogen here. Hydrogen of fluorine, I'll get HA. Hydrogen plus chlorine gas, I'll get HCl. Like this. But now if you see the reactivity series, which one will react more? I know that F has tendency to form F minus more, right? Because uh, it is more reactive, right? More electron negative. So react tendency to form F minus is more than Cl minus, then Br minus, then I minus. I'm just seeing the whole uh, halogen series here, right? Chlorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. So this has more tendency to form F minus. Since it has more tendency to form F minus, that is nothing but HF. This is nothing but HCl. This is nothing but HBr. This is nothing but HBr. So this reaction is easily done. I hope you got the point. See, because HF is something which has tendency to form HF minus easily, right? So, so this reaction is more favorable as compared to HI. So the uh, reaction of H plus F is more vigorous than the reaction of hydrogen and iodine. Correct. Let's see the reaction with metal oxides. So we will be looking into hydrogen plus metal oxides now. We can take uh, copper oxide, let me take iron oxide, and let me take lead oxide to start with. So copper oxide, if you react with water, we know that copper will get reduced, will become copper. Yeah, you have Fe3O4, again you react with hydrogen, again this will get reduced to form iron. Balance this. You have lead oxide, again you uh, treat with hydrogen, it will get reduced to lead and water. So if you see, we know that hydrogen acts as reducing agent. It reduces the metal oxide. This is something which we have learned also in the properties. And this is which you can see also here. Right? Now, we have to react hydrogen with organic compound. Hydrogen and organic compound. Let's see this also. So we have seen that hydrogenation is a process where you add hydrogens to hydrogen uh, to an organic compound to a double bonded or triple bonded right uh, organic compounds and we have one process also where we take vegetable oil which has double bond we add hydrogen in the presence of uh, nickel at 473 kelvin you get vanaspatiki this is used uh, extensively in the market right to get the vanaspatiki out of vegetable oil so we have un the, the reaction is like this we have unsaturated hydrocarbon or unsaturated organic compound organic compound we have this one one box you add hydrogen in the presence of nickel and some temperature delta T depends uh, on the organic compound, you get saturated organic compound. Right? This is my reaction. Now let's see some examples. So discuss the consequence of high enthalpy of HH bond in terms of chemical reactivity of hydrogen. So we know that H2 is unreactive in room temperature but if you increase the temperature to 500 kelvin it will be reactive so what happens is at room temperature it doesn't react but at high temperature we have seen that with metal you take uh, hydrogen and increase the temperature you get hydrides 
This happens because of H is bond. Because of H is bond, it is unreactive at room temperature, but it increases the temperature this bond becomes weak, and this reaction takes place. So we'll talk about hydrides. Uh, the usage of hydrides now. It is used in the synthesis of ammonia. Sorry, we are talking about the uses of dihydrogen now. We'll discuss hydrides later. So we have talked about the preparation of uh, dihydrogen pro uh, properties of dihydrogen. Now we are talking about the uses of dihydrogen. Ammonia is used in fertilizers. It is used to prepare vanaspati ghee. It is uh, used to prepare a lot of organic uh, chemicals, primarily uh, methanol. It is used extensively in the uh, metallurgy, as I told. It is used uh, to manufacture metal hydride. We'll discuss metal hydrides in the next few slides. Because it is also used to prepare HCl, very useful uh, acid. It is also used to reduce metal oxides to metal. We have seen, for example, copper oxide was reduced to copper. Right? So it is used to reduce uh, metal. And it is also used for cutting and bending purpose. Not only that, it is used for rocket fuel. You see in the rocket, uh, it is used. We have discussed this earlier. And it is used for fuel cell for generating electrical energy. Fuel cell is something which directly converts uh, any chemical to electrical energy. So in this case, if you see hydrogen is used and uh, you have a cathode and anode here. So which gives, uh, you see, the bulb going like this, right? So this is the electrical uh, cell, fuel cell, which converts hydrogen to electrical energy. So dihydrogen is used in a lot of places. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.